In 2020, we made the huge decision to sell our home in the lower 48 and move north to Alaska to live a way of life free from the hustle and bustle of big city life. Join us here as we share our everyday adventures living free in Alaska. Previously on Living Free Alaska, we leave the lower 48 behind and enter Canada during closed borders and work our way north via the scenic highways of Alberta and British Columbia. With 2,000 miles already under our tires in just four travel days, we are reminded of the beauty that the Alcan gives us as we continue our journey north to our new life that awaits us in Alaska. Well, good early Monday morning. This is day four in Canada. We just had our third overnight sleep. And this is our little caravan behind me. And uh, yeah, guess what guys? Today we will be in Alaska. So we are currently just south of Teslin, Yukon in the last little dog leg of British Columbia. Um, after Watson Lake, you enter BC one more time for a good little distance. And we're about five miles shy of the BC Yukon line. And this is a rest area. You can see the garbage bins and outhouses. And we pulled in here last night to stay out of any populated areas and, of course, camp for free. Uh, we've stayed here in the past, in 2017, and just like then, it proved to be a very quiet, restful sleep. So it is early. It is not even 7 a.m. yet. We got up at 6, and our goal is toke, which is going to be very close to another 500 mile day just because we did cut short our drive last night we were supposed to make it to johnson's crossing but it was eight o'clock we didn't have lunch we were hangry and it was time to stop so we knew this was a good rest area to pull over we just took up one little corner of it so truckers could still come through or anyone else and I think we had two trucks come through in the middle of the night but uh, yeah today we say goodbye to Canada for the last time until Lord knows who or when and we will enter Alaska and tonight we should be staying in Toke. Oh, turn around. <laughs> and, and inside. <laughs> She's done. The Yukon Territory holds a special place for us as this is where we made our first decision to visit Alaska via the road system. In 2015, we took a cruise to Alaska, and while in Skagway, we took an excursion to Carcross, which is about an hour south of Whitehorse. That charter bus ride literally changed our lives forever. The drive up the canyon from Skagway and to Carcross showed a sneak peek of what the interior looked like, and that was just enough to start making the plan to RV up here for the first time in 2017. The mountains, the little ancient trees, the rugged untouched landscape calls you to come deeper. And even as we drive on the famous Alcan, that same feeling calls you deeper and deeper. The 
Yukon also makes you slow down and really enjoy the journey. The road north of Haynes Junction is where the road starts to deteriorate and will make you come to a slow crawl in some spots due to what is known as frost heaves. Before we get to the worst part, we decide to stop for a lunch break and take a walk above Kluani Lake, one of the many breathtaking Arctic lakes in the Yukon. Love them or hate them, frost heaves will be a part of your journey, but there is no need to fear them. You will soon learn to navigate these annoying bumps in the road, and thankfully, with little traffic on the highway, you can use the entire road surface to navigate your way around or through them. This area of the Yukon is also grizzly country, and don't be surprised if you see a fuzzy grizz anytime during your travel through this area. I stopped and enjoyed this little fella while he grazed on roadside routes for a few minutes before continuing on towards the border. Oh my God. Just remember, always stay in your vehicle, give plenty of space to the animal, and don't have any interaction with the bears. The less he knows about humans, the better. The last stretch of the Yukon is when the road really slows you down. If you're wondering what a frost heave actually is, it's an upward swelling of soil during freezing conditions caused by an increasing presence of ice as it grows towards the surface. You will find it affecting paved roads more than dirt as it will crack the road surface since it's not natural. Many techniques have been tried to control frost heaves, but for the most part, Mother Nature always wins this battle. Woohoo! So we just checked out of Canada, turned in our immigration visa paperwork, and we have 18 more miles that we are in Canada. And next stop is the famous Alaska sign. Can't wait. We're about 108 miles outside of Tok. It's been a slow roll since Kulani Lake. Lots of frost heaves. Um, there's just no way to go fast over them. You've got to pick your route and just roll slow. We, uh, Sophie and I, picked up an extra hitchhiker and uh, Spirit, unfortunately, got car sick from the frost heaps. So my rig is a little smoother, so she's riding with us and I am praying that she doesn't throw up in the back seat. So here we are, 18 more miles. We're in between customs buildings. Uh, again, we checked out of Canada and next roll is Alaska. Well, we have arrived. We're officially on Alaska soil. And look what I see right up there. I see it down there somewhere. In the top left corner. I see it too.
All right, so here we are. We put this up in spring of 2019. And as you can tell, it filled up a little. This board was mostly empty. Yeah, it was. It was a brand new board in 19. So uh, we're still there. 2,400 miles, Canada in three overnights, four days. We finally made it to Alaska, but we still have 100 miles in to toke with some of the worst roads yet to come. We're home, folks. We're home. All right, we are through the U.S. border. Super easy. All they asked is if we bought bought anything in Canada and I said just fuel and then he asked if we turned in our immigration paperwork and I said yes sir and he says wonderful have a great day had me back my passport and I told all him all right we're going go. let's go let's go home fast eddies here we come As you can tell, we were excited to be back in Alaska and in the final home stretch of our journey. First up is Toke, 90 miles away, which is our next overnight destination at the famous Sourdough Campground and dinner at Fast Eddie's, a ritual stop coming or going when in Toke. Good morning from middle of the toke cutoff. We are near the Nebesna Junction and we had to stop for a potty stop. But uh, as you can see, it is a rainy gray day. Um, temperature is 37 degrees and the cloud deck is pretty low. We're not going to see the Ringo Mountains today, unfortunately. They are covered. But we left at about 8.30 and our GPS has us getting home. If we don't have any more stops at around 2.30 this afternoon. We had a really good night's sleep last night at the Sourdough Campground in Toke. We also had an excellent meal at Fast Eddie's. And we stopped at the Three Boys three bear shell in toke to fill up and say hello to Tracy our friend that actually owns and operates the sourdough campground but uh all is good it's about a five and a half six hour drive today to home and uh we're getting her done it's been a long I think this is six days of driving and uh we're ready to be off the road for a while. Looks like everybody is getting back to their vehicles and uh, our potty stop is done. So we're gonna get back on the road and work our way to Houston, Alaska. If you followed our RVing to Alaska Facebook groups in years past, one topic of conversation is the Toke Cutoff. In 2019, the state began a resurfacing project to repave the more problematic sections of this road, and we were happy to report that for the most part, the road is greatly improved and is no longer worthy of a detour. You still may need to slow down in parts of it, but for some sections it was smooth as butter, a strong contrast from years past. So if you fear taking the tote cut off due to past year's reports, fear no more. The 
Wrangell Mountains outside of Glen Allen are usually spectacular, but today they were hiding in the clouds. If coming through this part of the interior on a clear day, prepare to have your socks knocked off and your jaw drawn, as it is some of the most beautiful country. But no worries, as we rounded the corner onto the Glen Highway, our final stretch of remote driving was breathtaking. With only 150 miles left to go, we are almost home. Though I fought with my claws and teeth Though I elbowed my way to a seat There'd be no kind of peace like you beside me No matter the rain, no matter the storm I'm coming home, I'm coming home As it seems in the photo Nothing is as sweet going so long Nowhere I can ramble or roam Could change my mind Could slow my coming Well, Gary should be here any minute. We did have a slight hiccup as we came into town. As we rolled into Palmer, we noticed that we were losing fluid. So Gary pulled over and as soon as he did that, he lost uh, voltage and the engine turned off after the check engine light came on. Turned out we lost a serpentine belt. So we had to call mobile repairman. He came out to where we were parked and got us fixed up. I mean, we went, we figured it out, 2,765 miles without any issues. And we broke down 35 miles from home. Someone up above is looking out for us. So we drove ahead, as in myself and uh, the dogs. And Gary stayed back and waited for the repair to be done. It's done. And they're coming down the road. 
right now. And there's the text. They're turning on our road. We want to thank you for watching. We would be so honored if you hit that subscribe button below to stay tuned for more adventures as we begin our new full-time life here in Alaska. Thanks again for watching as we catch up the vlog to real time. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you're notified when we post again. And lastly, we hope you'll join us again next time here on Living Free Alaska.